This is Ann Cantrell with Global Atlanta, and I'm here with Tony Morris of American Maglev Technology. Um, thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure. Welcome to uh, our test track here. Thanks. Um, so can you just go through a little bit and explain the technology of how it works? Sure. I think all of us that have taken magnets and moved them toward refrigerators know about the power of magnetic fields. In this case, we use a magnetic field that is pointed from this magnet at this rail. The magnetic field wants to pick this vehicle up. Unfortunately, gravity wants to pull the vehicle down. We manage that gap at 10,000 times a second at 10 kilohertz to make sure that we hold that magnet and that this 50,000 pound vehicle exactly just so. Mm -hmm. And when we lift it up, it is, uh, it's essentially frictionless. Not completely, but essentially frictionless. So you have a 65 foot long vehicle with 300 people on board mm -hmm. and you can push it with, with one hand. So it's a great thing. We, we don't push it with one hand though. We right. push it with <laughs> motors that uh, we have two 1150 horsepower motors on board that create magnetic fields and push and pull the vehicle and they not only provide the propulsion force, but they also uh, provide the braking force as well. So we're able, like a, a hybrid automobile, to recapture a lot of that kinetic energy, put it in batteries, and use it for the next time. The result of all that is we need about 60% less energy than a steel wheel on steel rail system or a rubber tired system. So it's very green, very clean, no emissions at all and no moving parts, so there's nothing for anyone to maintain. Um, so could you go through and talk a little about how you started the company? You've been here since 2006, what kind of the, the process was? Sure, well, um, this is really the third generation here. We've actually been at this since the early 1990s, mm -hmm. and we've been looking for that solution for people that are looking for something that is cheap to build and cheap to mm -hmm. operate that can get people back and forth to work. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is, as I say, the third generation. We came out here in summer of 2006 and we built this test track in about five months and we have been testing since 2007-2008 and uh, we've had people from all over the world come out here and visit so it's really been uh, you know, very exciting. So would you say that there's more international support for it or more local support for it? Oh, I would say there's much more international support. I think that overseas the people don't have Washington DC to solve all their problems and so they need to find cheap solutions that can be implemented now and I think that uh, to that in that regard you know some of the emerging countries uh, that have such perplexing problems are actually ahead of us. Right. So speaking of Washington DC you know, lately Obama's put a good bit of money into um, high-speed rails do you think there's support for this technology in the US? I think that there is support for mobility options beyond just your car. And so we're really excited about that. In terms of high-speed rail, we don't really see us as being that technology. We're something completely different. We call it mega-regional transportation because rather than trying to connect two cities that are separated by huge cornfields, we don't live that way anymore. All the way from here to Orlando or here to Charlotte is, a, is an urban region. We think this is a technology that has a, a, a place at uh, up to speeds up to 120 to 150 miles an hour. Those kinds of speeds, we can stay within the confines of existing disturbed corridors like the interstate highway system. We don't have to buy land. We don't have to go through the environmental process, and we can get people, you know, on, with fast, frequent, and flexible service to Charlotte, to Savannah, to uh, uh, to Orlando in speeds that are much faster than a plane, much faster than a car, and much faster than a train. Mm 